Oh, you believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan. Welcome, oh Ramadan. Ramadan, it is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Welcome. To the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we will be discussing the topic, Ramadan, the month of repentance. Dr. Zakia, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Zakia, such an important topic, the month of repentance. Let's start off by asking you a fundamental question. What is the meaning of the word Tawbah? And both in general terms, I want to know it, and in the Islamic context, please. The Arabic word Tawbah literally means to return or to come back. And in the Islamic context, in the Sharia, it means a person who leaves the things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and he returns back to the things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. So in short, it means a person leaving the acts which Allah has prohibited and he returns back to the acts which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. And this aspect of Tawbah or repentance is present in all the religions that believe in the concept of God. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Tawbah and repentance in the Quran in several places including Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31, where Allah says, O oh, you who believe, turn all together in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may attain bliss. Allah repeats a similar message in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 222, where Allah says that Allah loves those who turn to Him in repentance and Allah loves those who are clean and pure. And a similar message is given in the hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, book of applications, hadith number 6309, where our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is more pleased when His servant seeks repentance than any one of you when he finds his camel which has been lost in the desert. That means Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is very pleased when anyone seeks his repentance, asks for forgiveness, and he forgives them. So, in short, Tawbah means repentance, which means leaving the act which is prohibited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and returning back to the acts which he has commanded. In short, it's a journey from the dislike to the thing which is liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. May Allah accept our Tawbah in that Inshallah. case. Inshallah. Dr. Zakir, what is the essential difference between the term Tawbah and the term Makfira, meaning, I believe, forgiveness. Makfira means forgiveness and Istikfar means seeking forgiveness. Istikfar, the meaning is of two types. One type of meaning is when it comes along with the word Tawbah. And the other meaning is when it comes individually. When it comes individually, it has one and the same meaning. The meaning can be interchanged it means exactly the same. But the scholars, they say, when it comes along with the word Tawbah, in Istikfar, it means that we are seeking protection from the past evils that we used to do. And Tawbah, when it comes along with Istikfar, it means that we are repentant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are seeking protections from the things which we may indulge in future. 
So basically istighfar means seeking protection from the things of the past which we used to do and toba seeking protection for the things which may unfortunately we may indulge in future. So this is the basic difference. If it comes separately, the meaning is one and the same. If it comes together, then it has two different meanings. It's good we're going through this technical definition phase in every episode. I think this is something which is missing amongst the brothers and sisters, is the real understanding of the basic terms. The next question really for me would be, why is it such a special thing to seek repentance during this holy, blessed month of Ramadan? This month is special because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives His slaves, His servants, the maximum in this month. Therefore, it is given the title Ramadan, the month of forgiveness. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in the Hadith of Tirmidhi, in the book of fasting, Hadith number 682, where our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, that when the first night of Ramadan comes, the devils and the demons, they are chained. And the gates of hell are closed. Not even a single gate is open. And the gates of heaven, they are open. Not even a single gate is closed. And the caller, he calls to the people that, oh, those who want to do good, please come. And those who are doing evil, please desist. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ransoms his slaves. And he does that every night of Ramadan. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad he further said, it's mentioned in a Sahih Hadith of Tirmidhi, Hadith number 3545, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad once he goes on the pulpit before giving a khutbah and he says, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen thrice. So the people ask, that no messenger, why? So the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Archangel Gabriel had come to him and said that anyone who does not have his sins forgiven after Ramadan is approached and enters the hellfire, ask Allah to keep a distance from him. And then Gabriel says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Say Ameen. So Muhammad Sallam says Ameen. Means it is unfortunate that anyone witnesses the month of Ramadan and does not have his sins forgiven because this is the month of forgiveness. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1901, that if anyone fasts in the complete month of Ramadan with belief and seeking the reward of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, all his past sins will be forgiven. That's the reason Ramadan is called as the month of forgiveness. Subhanallah. And Dr. Zakia, we used to have a saying back in the days before I embraced Islam that I wish it could be Christmas every day. And I'm going to say, I wish it could be Ramadan every day now, <laughs> more appropriately. What about the necessities of seeking repentance, especially during this holy month of Ramadan? And what are the merits of seeking forgiveness? It is compulsory for every believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for every Muslim, that if he does anything, whether minor or major, small or big, he should repent as soon as possible. Repentance is compulsory for any sin that you've committed. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31, O oh, you believe, turn altogether in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may attain bliss, so that you may become successful, so that you may enter paradise. Allah gives a similar message in Surah Tahrim, chapter number 66, verse number 8, that, O oh, you believe, Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere repentance. And Allah further says in the Quran, in Surah Hud, chapter number 11, verse number 3, that ask for forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his repentance so that he may do good to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse number 25, that he accepts repentance and forgives sins and ask for forgiveness. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of forgiving and most merciful. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 39, that if the thief, if he repents and if he changes his acts after repenting, if he has changed his acts, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns to him in forgiveness. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of forgiving and most merciful. Allah repeats this message in Surah Maida, chapter number 5. Verse number 74, that ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, for he is of forgiving and most merciful. Besides several verses of the Quran, there are several hadith which speak about the merit of Tawbah. For example, 
if you read the hadith of a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, book of applications, hadith number 6307, where our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, that I ask for forgiveness and repentance more than 17 times a day. Imagine our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the best of examples, who is the best human being on the face of the earth. He says that he asks for forgiveness and repentance to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala more than 70 times a day. It further mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number four, in the book of Dikr, hadith number 6523, where a beloved Prophet said, O believers, you should repent. And I repent every day hundred times to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's mentioned in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, volume number four, in the book of repentance, hadith number 6644, that a beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stretches out his hand during the night for the people who repent for the sins they have committed from dawn to dusk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stretches out his hand during the day for the people who repent for the sins they have committed from dusk to dawn until the sun rises from the west that means until the day of resurrection that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sin until the day of resurrection whoever repents a similar hadith is mentioned in Sahih Muslim point number four in the book of Dikar hadith number 6525 where our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep on forgiving for anyone who repents until the sun rises from the west. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the sins until the day of resurrection if any of his slaves, any of his servants ask for forgiveness. Further, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of Rikah, hadith number 6438, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, that if the son of Adam was given a valley of gold, he would yet want a second one. And if a second valley of gold is given to him, he would want the third. For there is nothing that fills the stomach of the son of Adam except dust. This shows that the greed the human beings have. And irrespective of how much Niyama Allah gives, he always seeks for more and more. Rather, he should repent and ask for forgiveness. And there's a different version of the hadith that quoted earlier. It's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number four, in the book of Dikr, hadith number 6613, where a beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more pleased when his servant repents, when his servant asks for forgiveness, than a person who while traveling on his camel in the desert he stops for rest and he sleeps beneath a tree. And when he wakes up, he sees his camel laden with goods. He's not there. So he climbs on a mound and he tries to find the camel, he does not find it. He climbs on the second mound, but yet doesn't find it. He climbs on the third mound, he doesn't find it. Then he turns back to the original position and there he sees his camel laden with the goods. And he's so happy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more happy than a person who finds his lost camel laden with goods in the desert. Allah is more happy than that when a person asks for forgiveness when he repents. So these are the merits of repentance and tawbah. It reminds me of my own journey to Islam once again. Month of Ramadan, this is when I found my fitrah. Alhamdulillah. Dr. Zakia, could you explain to us in brief or <laughs> at length, depending on the answer, what are the main benefits of seeking repentance during this blessed month of Ramadan? The benefit of seeking forgiveness, repentance, Tawbah, is according to Imam Raghib Isfihani, he gives three benefits for a person who repents. Number one, it patches up the fault that a person has and he realizes the point of entry into the heart of the devil. He realizes this is the point which is weak, through which the devil can enter. And this makes a person more aware and evasive of the evil. Number two is that the person, 
he feels embarrassed and he's fearful of the Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that brings in him the humility and the humbleness. Number three, a person who has tasted the evil and then comes back to the good, he has the taste of both the good and the evil. He has the taste of sweet as well as the bitter. So when he sees other brothers, other human beings committing the same fault, he is soft towards them and he forgives them and he helps them. According to Imam Ibn Qayyim, he gives six benefits for a person who repents. Number one, when a person repents, it is the best thing that Allah loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when a person repents and he asks for forgiveness because when a person repents, he is very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you find humility and humbleness. Number two, the act of repentance is one of the best acts of worship. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he realizes that his slave, that his servant, he has come back to the true path and he asks for forgiveness and he believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I mentioned earlier, that more happier than a person when he finds his camel which he lost. Number three, it brings humility and humbleness in a person. So he starts believing in the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much more than before. Number four, when a person repents, his heart is broken. And this is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hears the duas, the repentance. As the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, Mishra ibn Majah, volume number three, book of fasting, hadith number 1752, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears the supplication of three people. One is a just ruler or imam, second is a person who is fasting, and the third a person who is oppressed. In another hadith, it says that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears the supplication of three people who are either traveling, fasting, or oppressed. Here it indicates that all these three types of people, their hearts are broken. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes closer to the servants when the hearts are broken and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps them and gives them mercy. The fifth benefit is that when a person, he repents sincerely, it is one of the best forms of worship. And the saying of one of the Salafs, that a person, he may commit a sin and may repent and Allah will forgive him and he can enter paradise. On the other hand, a person who does good deeds, and he may have conceit, and because of that, he may enter hell. I mean, the person may be proud that, you know, he has made no mistake, no sin, and that may take him to hellfire. The sixth benefit is, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 70, that all those who believe, and they repent, and they seek for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns to them, and he forgives them, and he changes the evil deed into good deed. For Allah is of forgiving and most merciful. And according to Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, the moment this verse of the Quran was revealed, the beloved Prophet he was the most happy. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, says that the most happy when Allah's messenger was, after any verse of the Quran was revealed, it was this verse of Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 70, as well as of Surah Fatah, chapter 48, verse number 1, where Allah Subhanahu says, that we have given you manifest victory during Fatih Makkah. And Allah SWT says in Surah Kafir, chapter number 40, verse number 3, that he is of forgiving and Allah accepts repentance and is the one who forgives. And it's mentioned in Surah Hijr, chapter number 15, verse number 49, that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is of forgiving and merciful. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zakir. Regarding another important aspect, how Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts tawbah, repentance, what are the prerequisites for sincere tawbah? And could you possibly enlighten us with some prophetic traditions of some of the prophets making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah says in the Quran Surah Tahreem, chapter number 66, verse number 8, that, Ya Allah, O you believe, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere repentance. And there are basically five prerequisites for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept tawbah. Number one, the person should accept that he's doing is wrong. Number two, he should immediately stop it. Number three, he should seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four, he should not commit that act again. And number five, if he has taken something 
from any other human being. And if you can return it, you should turn it back. For example, if he has robbed some money, you should turn the money back. If he has taken some wealth, you should give the wealth back. If he can undo the harm, he should do it. And according to Ibn Qayyim, he says that repentance is accepted when the person does not do that evil act again. And it further helps him to do good deeds and prevents him from going back to that act. According to Imam an -Nawi, he says, there are three prerequisites for any Toba to be accepted. Number one, he should stop that what he's doing. Number two, he should ask for forgiveness. Number three, he should not do it again. And he says there's a fourth requirement. If he has done some harm to any other human being, then he should undo it if he can. And there are various examples in the Hadith which give that how people have asked for forgiveness. It's mentioned in the Hadith of Say Bukhari, volume number four, in the book of Stories of the Prophets, Hadith number 3470, that there was a person who had committed 99 murders. So he wants to seek repentance. So he asked the people that, how can he do it? So they sent him to a monk. So monk says that you have killed 99 people. There's no chance of forgiveness. So that person, that murderer, he kills the monk too. And now he has committed 100 murders. So he goes to another person and says that I want to seek repentance. So he says that if you want to seek repentance, go to that land where people are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, you should leave the land in which you have committed the crime. And go to that land where people are seeking repentance. And inshallah, Allah will grant you forgiveness. So he immediately goes towards that land. But on his way, death takes place and he dies. And he turns his chest towards that village where people are repenting. Then both the angels, the angels of good and the angels of bad, both come and they want to take him. The angels from the heaven say that we will take him because we want to repent. But the angels from the bad deeds, the hell, they say, no, he has not committed a single good deed. We will take him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intervenes. And he asks the village where people are repenting that it should come closer to the person who has committed murder. And he commands to the place where he has committed the crime that it should go further away. So when they measure the distance, they find out that the person who committed the murder, he was one span closer to the village where people are repenting. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him Jannah. So this is an example that a person commits 100 murder and he wants to repent. Only the niyyah of repenting and traveling towards that place and a different version of the same hadith says that while dying, he pushes himself towards the, and he looks towards the place where he can get forgiveness. So this shows that only the niyyah and the intention to ask for forgiveness, Allah forgives. There is another example in Sai Muslim, volume number three, in the book of Hudud, hadith number 4207. There was a lady from the tribe of Juhayna. She comes to the Prophet and she had committed adultery and she was pregnant. So she comes to the Prophet and says that I have done so and so sin. Please give me punishment. So the Prophet calls her master and says, take care of this woman till she delivers the child. And after that, get her to me. So the master he takes care of her. And after she gives birth to a child, he gets the woman. Then the Prophet says, because of the adultery, she has to be given the hath penalty. And the lady, she has to wrap around herself with her cloth. And the people stone her to death. And after she dies, the Prophet, he prays for her. So Omar, my life pleads with him, says, that, oh Prophet, you're praying for a woman who has committed adultery? Then the Prophet replies, that the way she has repented, even if you distribute this repentance to 70 people of Medina, it will be sufficient for them to go to Jannah. Who can repent better than the woman who is willing to give her life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A similar example is given in Sai Muslim, volume number 3, in the book of Hudud, Hadith number 4205, that Maya has been Malik, may life be with him. He comes to the Prophet. And he says that 
please purify me. The Prophet says, woe to you. Go and ask for forgiveness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you repent. The person, he goes back, again he comes and says, the door messenger, please pardon me. He says, woe to you. Ask for forgiveness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you repent. Again the person goes, again he comes for the third time. Oh messenger of Allah, please purify me. He says, go away from here. Ask for repentance. Ask for forgiveness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again the fourth time he comes and he says to the Prophet, please pardon me. The Prophet says, from what? So, Maiz, may Allah please with him, he says, that from adultery. So he says, are you mad? Have you gone crazy? So the person says, no, I'm not mad. Then the Prophet asks, that are you drunk? Did you have khamar? Did you have wine? So the other people get up and they smell his mouth. They said, no, Prophet. He said, no khamar. He said, did you really commit adultery? He says, yes, I've committed adultery. And I want the punishment for the sin I've committed. So the Prophet asked the people to stone him. And he was stoned to death. After stoned to death, there's a controversy between the Sahabas and the two groups of people. One group of people say that he has been undone. That means it's a pity that he will not get much further undone. The other group says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted Maaz, may Allah be them. Allah has accepted his repentance and he shall go to Jannah. This happens for two or three days. Then the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu comes and then he tells to the Sahabas that pray for Maaz ibn Malik because he has repented for his sin. And if you distribute his repentance, even in a large number of people, in a group of people, it will be sufficient. Here it shows that the people, they committed a major sin, but they repented. They were even willing to have themselves killed because both these people knew very well that the punishment for adultery was death, it was thrown to death. So here it shows that the high level of taqwa they had, the sincere repentance, that they are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah forgives them. Some beautiful examples and stories from wonderful companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thank you very much for that, Dr. Zakir. What are the special elements which go together to make a sincere repentance? There are four things required. Number one, a person should realize the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his power and his greatness, that if he wants to punish you, he can punish you immediately. So this will make a person repent. And we should not look at the minuteness of our sin. We should look at the greatness, forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nuh, chapter number 71, verse number 13 and 14, Allah says, that what has happened to you? Don't you have hope in the kindness and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created you in different stages? So if you know the mightiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's going to forgive you, inshallah you'll repent. Number two, everyone should realize that one day we're going to die and you're going to go to the grave. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 185, Kullu nafsin zaykatul maut. Every soul shall have a taste of death. And on the day of judgment shall be the full recompense. That means everyone has to die. And the final hisab kitab, the final recompense, will be on the day of judgment. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 34, Allah says that no one knows what will he earn tomorrow? And no one knows in which land will he die. So we have to realize that everyone has to die. And we don't know when will that time come. So that will help us in repenting as soon as possible. We don't know when is our last hour. The third point is that all the rewards for this world and the akhirah is based on your deeds for your akhirah. What you're going to do for your akhirah the deeds for your akhirah will actually reward you in this world and the akhirah. That's very important. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fatih, chapter 35, verse number 5, that the promise of Allah is true. And let not this present world deceive you, and let not the chief deceiver deceive you against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means we have to be careful that all our acts and deeds should basically target about the akhirah, about the hereafter. And there's a hadith mentioned in Tirmidhi, hadith number... 2320, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that this world for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is equivalent to the wing of a fly 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not allow a disbeliever even to have a handful of water from it. This world, in comparison to the hereafter, is like a wing of a fly, and you would not allow a disbeliever even to have a handful of water. A similar message is given in Say Muslim, volume number four, in the book of Paradise, hadith number 6483, where the beloved Prophet said that in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this world, as compared to the hereafter, is like a person putting his finger, that is the forefinger, into the ocean. And when he gets it out, whatever is stuck to the forefinger is like the present world. The present world, just hardly some little water that gets stuck to the forefinger, that's equivalent as compared to the mighty ocean that is the hereafter. So, so little is the significance of this world as compared to the hereafter. So, therefore, we should realize that this life is a test for the hereafter. As Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mulk, chapter number 6 and verse number 2, it is Allah who has created death and life to test which of his good and deeds. The fourth point is that human beings should realize that the punishment can be expedient in this world. And whatever punishment they get, it is because of their sin. Whatever calamity takes place in this, it is basically for their sin. As Allah says in Surah Zukhruf, chapter number 43, verse number 76, that no wise shall we be unjust to them, but it is they who have been unjust to themselves. So these four points are very important to be remembered. SubhanAllah. Thank you, Dr. Zakir, once again for the answer. Dr. Zakir, if we could just uh, now clarify, what is the, uh, the best time in one's life to seek repentance? Is there a best time indeed? Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 17, that Allah accepts the repentance of the person who has done sin in ignorance and he asks for forgiveness quickly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful and is the most knowledgeable and wise. Now here based on the commentary of this verse of the Quran, according to Mujahid, Allah have mercy on him, he said that the sin in ignorance means that any sin done knowingly or unknowingly, unless the person does not come away from the sin, it is done ignorantly. That means all the sins Allah forgive as long as a person repents quickly. As far as quickly is concerned, according to Hassan Basri, may Allah have mercy on him, he said quickly here means before death. And Ibn Abbas, may Allah please with him, he said quickly here means that before a person has a sickness, which is mentioned in the hadith of a beloved prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hadith of Tirmidhi, book of applications, hadith number 3537, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the repentance of a servant till his death rattle begins. That means till the time he goes on his deathbed, unless he is in the last stage of life when he is on deathbed, that is the only time Allah will not accept the repentance. Any time before that, he will accept. So that means all the scholars and see the agree that quickly here in this Quranic verse, Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 17 means that we should ask forgiveness before death. Allah says in Surah Az-Zumar chapter 39, Verse 54 to 58, it says that turn to your Lord in repentance before the penalty comes, before it's too late. Unless your soul says that I have done a wrong deed and I mocked, or the soul may say that please give me one more chance, but it will be too late. Allah says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse 1900, that when the time is over, when the time on the deathbed has come, and then you say that, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me one more chance. And Allah said that it's too late. There cannot be another chance given. So the time for repentance should be that if any sin is done in ignorance, you should repent as soon as possible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his mercy, from his bounty, he will forgive you. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zakir, for answering the question. Another question which is of equal importance, if not more, a lot of people are concerned about this. I know I am myself. How do we know? What are the indications and how do we know whether repentance is accepted? What are the indications? The indication as far as for repentance to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one is that you do not commit the same sin again and your good deeds keep on increasing and your bad deeds keep on decreasing. This is number one sign that Allah has accepted your repentance. Number two, that 
you have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three is that you regret to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you keep on asking his forgiveness. Number four is that you're humble and you always address him in humility. So these are the four signs which show that your repentance has been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The signs of non-acceptance of the Tawbah repentance is deficiency in the person's repentance and he remembers the pleasures of the sins and he gets preoccupied in continuing the sin. That's number one. Number two, he is so sure that his repentance will be accepted as though he has got immunity and he's immune to it and surely he'll be forgiven. That's number two. Number three is that his eyes don't cry and his heart is hardened. Number four, there's no increase in the good activities that he's doing. No increase in the good deeds. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sai Muslim, volume number four, in the book of repentance, hadith number 6621, that if the people do not commit any sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe them out and replace with the people who commit sin and who ask for forgiveness so that Allah can forgive them. Now here, if you understand this hadith, it will look very odd that does Allah want us to do sin? If you don't do sin, Allah will remove you. What it means that there are some people who may do sin and who may ask for forgiveness and repent and may come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the good deeds will increase. And these people will go to Jannah. On the other hand, some people who do good deed and they have a conceit. They're so proud of themselves and that will take them to the hellfire. So Allah says that if there's a group of people who don't do sin, Allah will replace them with the people who do sin so that they will ask for forgiveness and Allah will forgive them. That means you should have humility. So these are the signs for not acceptance of your tawbah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to accept repentance and our tawbah, Dr. Zakir. There is another question which I have, which is just to end this particular session, this particular show, and that is, is there any limitation to the sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can accept our tawbah for? As far as Allah's forgiveness is concerned and His mercy is concerned, every surah, every chapter of the glorious Quran, it begins with the beautiful formula, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Every surah except for chapter number 9, Surah Tawbah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Zumar, chapter number 39, verse number 53, that, O my servants who have transgressed against their souls, despair not the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah can forgive all sins. Allah is of forgiving and most merciful. Here Allah says that whatever your sin may be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can forgive any of your sins as long as you repent. If you repent in the right way and if you ask forgiveness, Allah will inshallah forgive you. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Sayyid Hadith of Ibn Majah, Hadith number 4251. The beloved Prophet said that every son of Adam, he commits sin. And the best is the person who repents. If you commit sin, no problem. But if you repent, then you're the best person. Repentance is very important. It's mentioned Hadith of Sirmedi, Hadith number 3540, where a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that Allah says, O son of Adam, you may do any sin and I will forgive all your sins, even if your sins reach to the clouds in the sky, I will forgive them. You ask me for mercy and I will forgive you. It's for the mission hadith of Sai Muslim, hadith number 6246, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that Allah says, even if you do sin day and night and ask for forgiveness, I will forgive you. You ask me for pardon and I will forgive you. It's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, form number 8, hadith number 5999. There were some prisoners of war who were released, mainly children and women. And one lady, she searches for a son and she cannot find a son. The moment she sees any child, she breastfeeds the child. Then another child she sees, she breastfeeds the child. Finally, she finds her own child. So the Prophet asked the Sahabas that, when this woman finds her son, even if he has done a sin, then will she throw the son in the fire? They said, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servants. Even if they commit sin, 
more than the lady loves the child. So based on this, we realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive any of your sin as long as you repent. And just a last quotation, Allah says in the Quran, and in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 48, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleases, he can forgive any sin. But the sin of shirk, he'll never forgive. Here it means that if a person does shirk and repents before he dies, before the death rattle, inshallah Allah will forgive even the sin of shirk. If he repents and comes to the straight path and believes in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believes in Tawheed, Allah will even forgive him his sin of shirk, which is the biggest sin. But if he dies as a mushrik, after he dies, Allah says here that he will not forgive the sin of shirk. Any other sin, if he wishes, he may forgive, but the sin of shirk, he'll never forgive. Shirk is the biggest sin. So from here we come to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and is willing to forgive the sins of his servants. Subhanallah. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Dr. Zakir, thank you very much for answering all the questions on the topic today. It's such an important topic it was. Myself, I feel sure that now I will know exactly how to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this wonderful month of Ramadan and use every breath of the 30 days, inshallah, for the benefit. Allah accept all our repentance on this glorious month. Ameen, ameen. All of the Muslims, inshallah. And let's hope that some of the non-Muslims will take the benefit of this wonderful month and they also will ask with sincerity and the correct methodology for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and Allah will accept their repentance as well. Inshallah. Dear brothers and sisters, we come to the end of the show. We weren't able to answer all of your questions regarding the topic, but inshallah, tomorrow we will endeavor to answer all of those questions. So, join us tomorrow when we will be discussing the topic, Ramadan, the month of supplications. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. يومنا صبر ورفق بدموع البائسين رمضان قد أهل بالصيام وأطل مسعدا أهلا وخلا لتوف كل حين